Hey guys, it's Bang for About PC Gamer here. Now I'm going to do this video about two different processors from completely different price points. I'm going to be comparing the AMD FX6300 Black Edition, which is a 6 core processor, which is going for about £74.89 in the UK right now. And it's, it's quite a good processor, comes with 6 cores, um, has a clock speed of 3.5 to 4.1, depending on how much boost you get out of it with the application and it's an all round good multimedia and gaming processor at a very very good price point now I'm going to be comparing it to the Intel Core i7-3770 which is a more expensive processor it is a quad core but has hyper threading so effectively it is an 8 core CPU now this retails for £244.99 in the UK if you're lucky enough to be able to get them and that's over £170 difference between the two CPUs so this video is more about trying to see what you're actually getting for your money when it when you pay that much more over the cheaper option now I'm not trying to compare these two CPUs as in and um, which one's better I'm just literally just trying to just try and come to some kind of um, justification in spending the kind of um, extra and to see what you actually get for your money so we all know obviously the i7-3770 is the faster CPU that's not what we're trying to establish but it would be nice to to see where that money actually goes so what I'm going to do in this comparison is I'm going to play two games um, I'm going to be playing Crisis 3 and Metro 2033 Redux and seeing if uh, the i7 gives you any kind of performance increase and I'm also going to be doing some video um, rendering as well so I'm going to render a 10 minute video and um, put them side by side and see just how much more um, difference there is between the two CPUs when it comes to video rendering also so um, I'll start off with the games and we'll see how it goes so before I start, I just want to quickly show you the setup for the FX6300 and the Intel i7-3770. As you can see, uh, the core uses 6 cores, so that's 0 to 5, and I'm using 8 gigabytes of memory at 1600 MHz. I'm also going to be pairing this with um, GeForce um, GTX 980 from NVIDIA. This is going to be running at stock settings and that's pretty much it. So as for the Intel i7-3770, um, this usually boosts up to 3.7 or up to 3.8 GHz. Obviously it's a quad core CPU but has hyper threading so it will be showing 8 cores in the test. And I'm also using 8 GB of RAM and that's also at 1600 MHz. I'm also using the same GTX 980 which is at stock for this test. Okay, so first up is Crisis 3. I'll run you through the in-game settings that I used. I used a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Um, for anti-aliasing I use SMAA Medium 2TX. Text resolution at very high and system specification at very high. In advanced settings, all settings are at very high. Anastropic filtering is at 16 times, motion blur is at medium, and lens flares is enabled. Here, take my backup. Dane, three to come out. Keep low. Move! Dane, bandit, make the diversion. Profit! Let's go. Romeo Actual, this is Romeo 1. Initiating burnout. Over. Copy that, Romeo 1. We've got to get you in there, inside the dome. It's a war starting. The Alpha Seth? No. Remember those guys who shot you from the K-Bombs in Siberia? The guys who had you in lockdown for God knows how many years? The guys who tore the nanosuit from my flesh? The guys who were going to do the same to you? Sell? Those guys. Oh, forget it. Warning. 
Nano suit disembarkation in progress. All non-essential personnel must leave That's the area. Max. Cell security AI. Silence up on. We're walking straight through the front door. Surprise is going to be our only chance. No one's crazy enough to give this a go. Let's do this quietly. They've got QRF teams on standby. Visible silent killing machine. Serious kit, this. You like it? No. Well, that's because you haven't heard the good part. Carbon lasers map that bow to your nano suit. It has enough kinetic energy to stop a rhino dead. With interchangeable heads, you can drop an explosive charge on any target. And best of all, you stay cloaked. You like it now? I'm coming around. Good. Now let's move out. So, next up is Metro Redux. The in game settings are used. Again, with the resolution of 1920 by 1080. Quality level at very high. No SSAA. Texture filtering at 16 times. Motion blurs at normal and tessellation is enabled. I also enabled advanced physics. Hey, Artyom. When you left your home station, did you ever think we'll end up in a place like this? Not knowing whether we were about to save our world, or send it straight to hell. Gotcha! What? We'll have to get through the military outpost to reach the surface, Artyom. Тихо, тихо, тихо. Something's moving in the next room. Shit is always breaking down in here. Use the auxiliary hand system to open the gate. Artyom, check those crates for ammo and med packs. Ready, Artyom? Follow me. Okay. Up we go. Oh, seems like nobody's home. Before we hit the surface, put your gas mask on. Without it, you're like a goldfish outside his door. This is the Torelli of performance. Well, it's very close in time. Get your weapon! Suki, here they come.
Let's hold together. You ready? Boom! Yeah. And Okay, so I'm done with the game performance. I want to move on to some video editing now. And the the software I use is Cyberlink uh, Power Director. This is version number 12. And this is what I mainly use to edit my videos. So I want to see just how much difference there is between the FX6300 and the uh, i7-3770 when it comes to video rendering. I'm just going to edit one of my previous videos which is it's about 10 minutes long just going to drop that onto the timeline now and I'm going to edit this in as an MPEG-4 format in uh, 1080p which is pretty much what everyone uses for basic YouTube uploads so I'm just going to go ahead and run this and stick the timer up and see which one finishes first So as you can see the i7-3770 really showing its dominance when it comes to video rendering. Um, you can see that the, um, the FX6300 is still going and um, obviously for the interest of time I'm going to have to speed this up so we can see the total time it took to complete the same video at the same rendering settings. So at the end of the test, the AMD FX6300 ended up taking around about 6 minutes 25 seconds longer to complete rendering the 10 minute video um, at 30 frames per second. Now 6 minutes may not seem like a lot to most of you but if you're a serious uh, video editor and you're doing things at a feature length, say something like a, a typical film would be an hour and 20 minutes then you're looking at um, you'll be waiting an extra 50 minutes approximately for that test for that video to finish rendering um, with the AMD um, instead of the Intel CPU so in the sense of if you're strictly 
um, big on your video editing then um, the FX 6300 um, probably wouldn't be the best thing for you to get um, in terms of gaming it was only with the two games I tested around between 10 and 15 frames per second slower um, while being paired with the GTX 980 so um, for the price being 170 pounds cheaper um, you can't go wrong with it it does a job and for me finding out if uh, the Intel i7-3770 justifies its price I wouldn't say it warrants such an increase in price I would say if it was about 120 pounds more expensive then I could accept that but it does perform better ultimately so I guess the best thing to do if you can stretch for an FX8350 that would probably be the best processor to get in terms of price and performance I may be um, getting my hands on one in the next two months so if I do and if you guys like this video then I'll definitely uh, revisit this test and put the FX8350 up against the Intel i7-3770 um, anyway guys that's it from me hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching